Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Gareth here from tastycheats.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you can create polygonal artwork in Adobe Illustrator. So this is one example I have prepared earlier. This fun image of a polygonal pug. Next, an image of a Roman statue on a plinth. And next, I have a composition of a stag's head. And finally, a Greek statue with this colourful mohawk hairstyle. Now, if you wish to take a closer look at the examples and the work documents to get a better understanding of how these were created, you can find them in the downloadable project folder. The link is in the description. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate a flat polygonal effect. In a previous episode, I demonstrated how to create a gradient polygonal effect. In that episode, I used Illustrator to first trace an image and then I took the paths into Photoshop to add the gradient effect. Now it can take a long time to create artwork like this and currently it's so much easier and faster to use the gradient tool in Photoshop. So that is the only reason why we used Photoshop for the gradient effect. If you're interested to learn how to create the gradient polygonal effect, you can find the link to that tutorial in the description or you can check out the PDF reference document contained in the downloadable project folder. This shows some more examples with a link to the video. Now for this tutorial, we are going to stay 100% in Adobe Illustrator. So why Illustrator and not Photoshop? Well, when doing this from scratch in Photoshop, one, it's a lot more time consuming to get right, and two, you get a lot of anti-aliasing, which leads to white lines between the polygonal shapes. In my opinion, it's best to create this flat polygonal art style using Illustrator. One, you have so much more control of your paths and your polygonal shapes, Two, you end up with no anti-aliasing, those annoying white lines between the shapes. And three, you end up with a bold, sharp vector image. Okay, so with all that said, let's get into it. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how I took this image, this picture of a Greek statue on the left with the colorful mohawk hairstyle, and converted it into this polygonal artwork on the right. If you wish to have a go at this yourself and follow along, you can get this image. You can find this in the downloadable project folder, or you can grab an image you like and apply this technique to your image. Now, before I begin, I must stress that there is no quick way of creating this artwork. Currently, there is no filter in Illustrator that can create this polygonal effect. We are going to have to create this from scratch, and depending on which image you want to use, it's going to take a little time to create. To create this kind of artwork, you're going to need a little patience and determination, but I can guarantee by the end of it, you will be happy with your achievement. Now in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a technique that works really well for me, and to help you, I'm going to break it all down so you can understand the process and easily create this kind of artwork for yourself. So basically, my technique works in three main steps. Step one, preparation. Step two, tracing. And step three, coloring. Now, once the artwork is complete, you can either use the vector or export as a JPEG, and I'll be demonstrating this at the end. Now, if you wish to come back at any time or skip ahead on the timeline, you can find the times for each of these steps in the description. Okay, so let's begin with the first step. Step one, preparation. Now, in this stage, we are going to set up a document and place in our image ready for the next stage when we begin to trace the image. So in Illustrator, the first thing I'm going to do is set up a new document. So I'll come up to File, New. Now in the New Document Options, I'm going to set my profile to Print. Then for the size, I'll choose A3 and make sure the orientation is set to Portrait and click OK. So with my new document set up, I'm going to bring in my image. So I'll come up to File, scroll down and click Place. Upon click, I'm going to navigate to the downloadable project folder into the O1 Examples folder, I'll come into the Greek Mohawk folder, into Source, and click the image, and click OK. Upon click, I'll get a cursor prompt asking me where I want to place my image. I'll just go ahead and click once, and the image will appear in my document. Now this is an image I have prepared earlier in Photoshop. Earlier I spent some time composing my image for my polygonal art composition. I cut out the head sculpture from a photo I took at a museum and superimposed the mohawk hairstyle for a bit of fun and colour. So you can bring in any image you wish to trace, 
but I recommend you pre-compose your image in Photoshop. By doing that, you will have a better image and a better composition to work with. So right now, this image is a little smaller than my canvas area. So I'll drag my image to meet the top left and I'll click and drag the bottom right corner down while holding shift to scale to fit the entire canvas. Great. So once I'm happy with my composition and my image is inserted into Illustrator, I now need to prepare the layers to make the conditions better for tracing. So I'll come over into the Layers panel, double click on the layer and call this Source. Then I will click the Lock icon. This will stop me from accidentally moving or editing this layer in future. So next I'll press Command L to create a new layer. On this new layer, I'll come over to the menu and select the Shape tool. With that, I'll draw a box over the entire canvas area. Once created, I'll be sure to set the foreground color to white and make sure there is no stroke applied. With the shape selected, I'll set the transparency to 50%. If you cannot see your transparency panel, you can come up to Window, scroll down and select it from there. Now the reason for this white layer is that it's going to make the overall image below it just a little lighter. I find this makes it easier to trace the image. It works just like tracing paper. This will help see the lines we are about to create. Now you don't have to set up this layer, but I find when tracing really dark images, this can help. Once set up, again double click on the new layer. This time I'll call this white layer. So next, with the new white shape selected in the canvas area, I'll press Command C to copy, then press Command L to create a new layer. Once created, press and hold Command plus Shift and press V. This will paste the white shape on the new layer in the same place. Now this time, with the white shape selected, double click on the foreground color in the menu and set this to black. Because the current shape has a transparency of 50% applied, it will be a dark grey. Once set up, again double click on this new layer and call it grey, and click the lock icon of the white layer and the grey layer. Now we are going to use this grey layer later on as we develop the lines. This is simply here for you to clearly see your lines as we draw them later on in this tutorial. For now, we can toggle the visibility of the grey layer off so we can see our source image. Now the last thing to do in the preparation stage is press Command L again to create a new layer and this time double click on the layer name and call this Trace. Okay, so this is how the layers should be set up. The top layer should be Trace, the layer under that should be Grey, under that is the white layer and at the bottom should be the source image. So once everything is in place and I'm happy with my composition, I'm going to save my document. On this occasion, I'm going to save my document to the project folder and I'm going to call this Polygonal Greek. So that concludes the preparation stage. Once you're happy with your composition and you have saved your document, it's time to move into the next step. Step two, tracing. So in this next stage, we are going to trace our image to create the polygonal shapes using the pen tools. Now we are going to use Illustrator for this task as the pen tool functionality is vastly superior to that in Photoshop. Using Illustrator is going to help us get an accurate trace and enable us to modify our paths later. By the end of this stage, we will end up with something that looks like this. As you can see here, I have the outlines of all the shapes which I have previously created. Here I can toggle the visibility of the source image layer and then toggle the visibility of the grey layer to clearly see the strokes that make up the composition. And if you wish to take a closer look at this example for reference, you can find this in the project folder. The link is in the description. Now it's these shapes that we will eventually apply colour to to finalise the artwork. So let's start the tracing stage. So here I have the document we just set up in the previous step. Now we can begin to trace the image. So to start, I'm going to zoom right in. Now you can start wherever you like, but I like to start from the middle of the image and work my way out. So I'm going to press P on the keyboard to activate the pen tool. Now before I start clicking away, I'm going to make sure that in the menu, the fill color is set to none. If yours has a color, we can set this to none by first clicking the fill color to select it, and then carefully click the box below with the red line through it. By clicking this, we will now have the fill color set to none. So next, I'm going to set the stroke color to white. 
I can do this by clicking the stroke square and if it's not already set to white, I can double click and choose a white color from the spectrum. Great. So next I want to set up my stroke size. Now, if you cannot see your stroke panel, you can come up to window, scroll down and select yours from there. Now, once I can see the stroke panel, I'm going to click on the drop down and change the size to 0.25. So this is going to make a nice thin white stroke when I start to trace the image. So with the trace layer selected in the layers panel on our pen setup, now comes the tricky part, tracing the image. Now the rule with creating this kind of artwork is that we are going to be working in triangle shapes. Each shape we make needs to have three points and they all need to seamlessly connect together. So I'm going to start in the middle of the forehead here between the eyes and I'm going to start by clicking once to place my first point, again for my second point and again for my third. And lastly, I'm going to move my mouse cursor over the first point and when I see the little circle icon appear, this is Illustrator telling me that if I click, I will create a complete shape. So upon click, I have now created my first shape outline. Now, if for any reason I'm not happy with that shape, I can simply press A to activate the direct selection tool and click and drag on a point to move it around into another position like so. To continue drawing shapes, I can press P to activate the pen tool. So as soon as we have created a shape, we are going to create another though currently our stroke is still active on the previous shape. So I'll press Command Shift A and that will deselect the stroke of the shape we just made. Now remember this keyboard shortcut because we are going to be using this a lot in this process. This will allow me to click on the edge of the shape I just created on top of the stroke. Then I'll click to place a new point, then click back on the corner point of my previous shape and just like earlier, click back on the first point to complete the shape. So now I have two shapes and we can see that the two paths that make up the two shapes are now overlapping here. So I'm going to make another shape. So I'll press Command Shift A to deselect the previously made shape. And this time I'll try another shape here like so. And just like that, I have created another shape and I'll press Command Shift A to deselect. Now keep in mind that every time you click on the corner of the previously made shape, try and get it exactly on top of the anchor point, or as close as possible. You want to be as neat as you can, as this is going to save you some time in the long run. So this is the technique I'm going to use to go around my face to draw shapes. What you want to do is use the image below as a reference to trace the structure of the image, in my case, a face. So around the nose, eyes and jawline to get an accurate resemblance. Now it's completely up to you how big you want to create your polygon shapes. The smaller your polygons, the more detail you can capture, but that will result in more work you will need to do later when you come to coloring the artwork. So I'm going to continue to create more polygon shapes down the nose here, being careful to create complete shapes and overlap them together on the strokes like so. Once one polygon is created, I will create another one immediately next to it, building a web of polygon shapes until they grow outwards to cover the surface of my image. What you must achieve at this stage are shapes that sit seamlessly side by side. Now don't worry too much at this point about it all being perfect. If you do make any mistakes along the way, such as not connecting your points accurately or accidentally adding curves to your strokes, you can always clean this up later. I'll be using the pen tools later to clean up any errors, and I'll be showing you how to do that shortly. So after a little while, I will have something that looks like this. So here I have most of the face covered in polygon shapes. If I now toggle on the visibility of the gray layer, we can clearly see these polygon shapes. Here you can see where I have left out the eyes. In this example, the statue has no details in the eyes. The eyes have no iris. Normally, this can be a really tricky part to get right. So I'll be coming back to this a little later. Now, if you look carefully, you can see where in some areas, the polygon shapes are smaller than others. For example, around the eyes, I have chosen to create smaller and more intricate polygon shapes in order to capture the detail and definition of the face. You can also see the same is for the nose area and around the lips. 
Now, on the forehead and the cheeks, I have used larger shapes, as there is less detail here. So keep in mind, if you want to show more detail and definition of structure, you may want to use smaller polygon shapes. Now, be sure to save your document as you make progress tracing your image. So I'll toggle off the gray layer and continue. So now I'm going to come down and continue to draw polygon shapes extending down under the head, on the neck and on the chest area. So after a little while, I will have something that looks like this. Now I have the neck and chest section complete. If I now toggle the visibility of the gray layer, we can clearly see these polygon shapes. If I toggle the gray layer off for a second, notice here that on the reference image, we have these areas of various color, such as the shadows under the head and the various colors on the cross section of the statue. Here, I have traced over these colored areas in sections. If you look closely, you can see that these areas are neatly covered in polygons. This detail is going to make for an interesting outcome later and a closer resemblance to the image when we come to color the artwork. This will give a good definition to the image. So now I'm going to move up and continue to draw polygons in the hair region using the image below as a reference. So this part of the image is one of the most complex. We have lots of detail and texture here. So by creating lots of smaller polygon shapes, we can capture that complexity in color and texture. So after a little while, I will have something that looks like this. So now I have the hair area traced. Here I have used a combination of medium and small polygon shapes to try and reflect the movement of the hair. Also, I have made sure to section off areas of color. So now I'm almost finished with the tracing. Now you can see all I have left are the eyes. On this occasion, I have left this part to last as this can often be the most tricky part to trace. So I'm going to zoom right in on the eyes here and start to work from the outside in, creating my polygon shapes. And that's looking pretty cool. Again, be sure to save your document as you make progress tracing your image. So I'm quickly going to pan over to the other eye and trace this in. And after a little while, I'll finally have my image traced in Adobe Illustrator. If I toggle on the visibility of the gray layer, we can clearly see these polygon shapes. So now we are starting to make some serious progress. Once you have covered your image in polygon shapes, the last thing we need to do is clean up the strokes. Now, if like me, as you build your shapes, you're going to start to lose patience as it does get a little tedious. Now, along the way, you may find you make a few little errors and some of your strokes won't line up correctly and some of your lines maybe have curves. Now it's time to clean up all those little errors. So what I'm going to do now is press Command Y on the keyboard. Now this is going to convert our view to outline view. Now no matter what the stroke size in your artwork, you will now see them as pixel lines. This is going to clearly reveal and expose all those little errors in our strokes. So now if I zoom in, I can see some of the polygon corners and strokes are not overlapping correctly. For example, here we can see that the points of these shapes are not matching up. So to quickly rectify this, by pressing A on the keyboard, we can activate the direct selection tool. If I click and drag an area over the points like so, upon release, I will select them all. With these points selected, I can come up to the top control panel and click the horizontal align center button. This will then align all the points to the center. Then I can come back up into the control panel and select the vertical align center button. And then this will align all the points vertical. So by using those two align tools in the control panel, you can accurately align those points up perfectly on top of each other. So keeping that technique in mind, I'm going to move around my polygonal artwork and look for more errors. And when I see them, I can click and drag over them like so and hit the alignment buttons in the control panel and that will quickly and easily align my points accurately. So here is an example where I have accidentally held the cursor down when creating the strokes and I have accidentally added some curves. So with the direct selection tool active, Click the stroke line, 
and where we can see the curve handles sticking out at the end, simply click on the anchor point and drag it into the corner point, and that will remove the curve in the line. So I'll go through my artwork looking for these mistakes, and I'll correct them as I see them. After a little while, you will hopefully have a perfect composition where all your strokes line up on top of each other. Once you're happy, save the document and press Command Y to go back to the preview mode and toggle off the grey layer. So now you can see why we have used Illustrator for this stage. Illustrator offers us the pen tools and the ability to edit our points very effectively and efficiently, especially when using the align tools up in the control panel. So once you feel happy with your trace and certain it's all accurate, it's time to move on to the next stage and add colour. Step 3. Colouring So by the end of this stage, you will end up with something that looks like this. I'm now going to extract colours from the source image and apply colour to create flat polygonal shapes. If you wish to take a closer look at this example for reference, you can find this in the project folder. So let's begin with the colouring stage. So the first thing I'm going to do is come and toggle the visibility of the white layer, and I'll set this to off. What we want here is to see the original source image in full opacity, because we are about to sample colours from it. So I'm going to press V to activate the selection tool. And just like how I trace the image, I'm going to start from the middle of the face and work my way out. So I'll zoom right in here. Now I'm going to place my mouse cursor over the stroke and click once. Now you will get an indication of which shape you have selected by the bounding box around the shape. Now you will have to be careful here and click around a few times in order to get the shape you want. These strokes overlap, so sometimes you may select a shape you don't want. So once I have the shape I want, I'm going to press I to activate the eyedropper tool. So now I'm going to select one colour from the image source below. Now, your current polygonal shape may cover a range of colours. What you have to think about here is to try and capture the essence of the image below. We are not going to know what the outcome will be, so it's a bit of an unpredictable creative adventure. Only having one colour is going to simplify the colour outcome, but that's what will give this artwork an interesting look and feel. Here you will have to use your creative instinct to choose a colour you think will work well. So I'll make sure the foreground colour is selected in the menu and I'm going to click to select a colour from the source image. Upon click, the shape will fill with the colour I chose from the source image. Now if I do not like that colour, I can simply press Command Z to undo. Press I again to activate the eyedropper and choose a new colour and repeat the process until I have a colour I'm happy with. So once I'm happy with the colour, I'm going to press V, which will allow me to move on and select the next shape. Now here is a little tip to keep in mind. Now it can be tricky to select the next shape by attempting to click on the stroke line. So what I do is click off the shape into the empty space to deselect the current shape, then click in the empty space of the next shape and drag over the two stroke lines to select the shape I just filled. This will effectively select the two shapes. I will then press and hold shift and select the shape I just filled in with colour. This will deselect that shape and leave the shape immediately next to it selected. That's quite a quick and easy way of selecting the shape immediately next to the shape you just filled. So with the new shape selected, I'll press I again to activate the eyedropper and choose a colour inside the shape from the source image below and that creates the second coloured shape. Now it will help you to remember the keyboard shortcuts and the process order as this will help speed up your workflow. So remember these shortcuts, these are also specified in the description. So press V to activate the selection tool, click off the shape to deselect the previously coloured shape, click into the empty space of the neighbouring shape and click and drag back onto the shape you previously coloured to select them both, Press and hold shift and click the previously coloured shape to deselect it. With the neighbouring and empty shape now selected, press I to activate the eyedropper tool and click a colour from the source image inside the shape area. Once happy, press V and click off to deselect the shape in the empty space. 
and then do the process over and over again. So I'm going to proceed around the face area, selecting the individual shapes, selecting one color from within the shape from the source image. Now this will take a little time to do, but trust me, it will be all worth it in the end when you end up with a really cool piece of artwork. After a little while of repeating this process, I will have something that looks like this. So as you can see here, I have the face colored in. Now I have left out the eyes for the time being, which I will work on a little later. Now if I come to the layers panel, I can toggle off the visibility of the source image layer and begin to see the artwork in its own right, taking shape. So now I'm beginning to capture some nice color effects around the eyes and on the cheeks here. It's starting to look interesting. So I'll toggle back in the image source and proceed down under the face, around the neck and in the chest area. After a little while of repeating this process, I will have something that looks like this. So by carefully tracing the image earlier and making sure to section off the areas of color, it's showing really nicely here in the colored outcome. This is beginning to look pretty graphic now. So I'll toggle back in the image source and proceed into the hair area using the exact method as before, selecting the individual shapes, selecting one color from within the shape area and use the eyedropper tool to fill the color inside. After a little while of repeating this process, I will have something that looks like this. So now I have the hair area colored in. If I toggle off the visibility of the source image, I can see this artwork is beginning to come along and look pretty cool. So now I have almost completed my artwork. So I'll toggle back the source image, come into the eye section, zoom right in, and using the same process, I'll select my areas and carefully choose my colors like so. Shortly, I will have something that looks like this. And now all of my face image is complete. Nice. So looking at my colored artwork as a whole, if there are any polygon shapes I want to change the color of, I can zoom in, press V to select the shape. Then in the menu, I'll click the swap fill and stroke button above the foreground and stroke color. This will reveal the source image below. And if I press I to activate the eyedropper, I can proceed to select a new color, easy. So now I have finished the coloring of the image. The last thing I want to do is add a background color. So I'll toggle off the visibility of the source image, the gray layer and the white layer. I'll select the gray layer just under the trace layer and press command L to create a new layer. And if that appears on the top, I'll quickly click it and drag it under the trace layer. I'll double click this and name it background solid. So in the menu, I'll set the foreground color to black and the stroke to none. I'll select the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle under my image like so. I'll position this and resize it so I have a nice white border around my image. I'll select my black shape and set the transparency to 20%. Once happy, I'll click the lock icon in the layers panel. So that finishes the polygon artwork in Adobe Illustrator. Now, once you're done, you're going to want to share this image. What I'm going to do next is export this image as a JPEG, which you can post online or send over email. So once you're ready to export, come up to file and click export. Upon click, up will pop the export menu. So on this occasion, I'm going to click on the format at the bottom of the menu and choose JPEG. Above, I'll choose a destination to save my image. On this occasion, I'll save it to the project folder. Once happy, I'll click export. Now, when you click export, up will pop the JPEG export options. So from the top, choose your color mode. If you plan to share this on the web, choose RGB, or if you want to print this, choose CMYK. On this occasion, I'll just go ahead and choose RGB. For quality, let's keep this to maximum. Now this bit is important. In the options, for compression, this can be set to baseline standard. For resolution, let's go with the max, so high 300 DPI. Now for anti-aliasing, this needs to be set to art optimized super sampling. Now this is really important. This will ensure that the lines between your polygonal shapes will remain nice and smooth and seamless. So once happy, click OK. 
So I'll navigate to my image in the project folder and I want to show you the quality of the JPEG. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to open it in Photoshop. So here I am in Photoshop with the JPEG open I just exported from Illustrator. If I zoom in here to 100%, we can see it's nice and large and you can see that the lines between the polygonal shapes are seamless and we have no weird anti-aliasing going on here. So that has turned out perfect. Now notice, we have lost the white border around the image. That is because Illustrator only exports what is on the canvas area in the document. We do not have a white border in Illustrator, just a white space. So it has not included it here. To rectify this, I can simply create a new A3 portrait document, copy the polygonal image, and paste it into the new document like so. Easy. And that completes this flat polygonal art example. So once you have your JPEG image exported from Illustrator and you open it up in Photoshop, you can then experiment further with some quick and easy color effects. This is an example where I have taken a polygonal image from Illustrator and added some color effects. If you want to take a look at this example, you can find it in the project folder. So if I turn off the color effect layers, here I have what I created in Illustrator, a grayscale trace of a Roman statue. So what I have done here is export and open this artwork in Photoshop and add a few details, such as a shadow under the plinth, I have added a color gradient effect to the statue using some blending modes and gradients. And I have applied a gradient border around the outside. Now, I could have done this entirely in Illustrator, but on this occasion, I have found it easier to create the shadow under the plinth in Photoshop and apply the quick color effects. I can now save this and print or share online. So that is how you can create polygonal art in Adobe Illustrator. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you'd like to see more videos like this in future, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget, you can download the documents you saw in this tutorial. All links are in the description. Well, that's another video brought to you by tastytutes.com. Thanks for watching, have fun guys, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.